Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Nurse Melissa. I am a registered nurse and this is the Lucky Nurse Lectures. So in today's lecture video, we're going to talk all about the nursing process through the very popular acronym ADPI. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So what is the nursing process? Basically, the nursing process is a systematic guide for nurses to follow that helps in delivering holistic and patient-centered care when delivering care to patients. The nursing process uses scientific reasoning and requires critical nurse thinking in order to be effective. Now, when we're looking at important components of the nursing process, it has to be patient-centered. It requires being attuned to patient's needs, personal beliefs, their values, and their personal preferences. So nurses must be an advocate for their patients always. And in order to do this, the nurse needs to talk to the patient and understand their personal preferences. It also requires interpersonality. So there should be a mutual respect between the nurse and the patient when the nurse is providing care. So it's really a two-way relationship that involves interaction between the nurse and the patient. And so this goes into the next component of the nursing process, which is that it is collaborative. So it's not just you caring for the patient, it is you working with the patient to figure out what is best for them and to provide them the best care. And then lastly, critical thinking. Vital skills for all nurses to have when identifying patient problems and coming up with solutions is to use critical nurse thinking. Now, there are many benefits to using the nursing process when providing patient care, and these benefits are both for the nurse and for the patient. The first one listed here is that it helps to identify patient's baseline and their current status. So what is the patient usually like? What is their average or their typical health? And what is their health right now? It's also beneficial in identifying potential health issues and needs in the patient. It's helpful when developing care plans to meet the identified healthcare needs. So basically when you are working to develop a care plan for that patient and identifying goals, the nursing process is going to help make sure that everything is specific to that individual patient because every patient is going to be different. So the nursing process really helps to individualize care. It helps with performing nursing interventions in order to meet healthcare needs, and it helps with performing tasks in an organized way. So basically, whenever the nurse is going into the room or going into a patient care setting to care for the patient, this nursing process helps everything to be in an organized, systematic way every single time. It helps to provide consistency when caring for the patient. So there are five steps to the nursing process, and those five steps are the assessment, the diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. And even though this is listed in a circle in the PowerPoint, the order actually does matter. Assessment is at the top because it's the first thing that the nurse is going to do when caring for the patient. Once the patient is assessed, then the nurse can use all of the information that was gathered during the assessment to create a nursing diagnosis. And then once the nursing diagnosis is created, then they can start planning, which would be your care plan on how to best serve the patient, how to best deliver care. And this is also when goals are created for the patient. Next is implementation. So that care plan that was made in the planning stage, implementation is when that is actually going to be acted out. And then once all of the care is provided, then the evaluation stage is the last stage in the nursing process. And that is going to just evaluate what went well in the patient's care, what didn't go well, what could have went better, why things went well, why certain goals were met, and why certain goals were not met. So a great way to remember the different steps of the nursing process and the order that those steps come in is through the very popular acronym ADPI. So I'm going to break down each step in the nursing process and get really specific, but just as a general overview, assessment is where you're going to collect data and that data can be both subjective and objective. Diagnosis is where you're going to be using clinical judgment in order to create a nursing diagnosis for the patient. Planning is where goals and objectives are going to be established for the patient and in patient care. 
Implementation is going to be actually implementing those healthcare interventions that were identified during the planning stage. And lastly, evaluation. This is going to be the last step that involves reflecting on different patient outcomes. So the assessment step, like I mentioned, involves collecting data from the patient. And so like I mentioned in the last slide, that data could be either subjective or objective. And I put a chart here just so that you could see examples of each. Basically, subjective data is based on personal feelings and opinions. This is information that you cannot actually see with your own eyes. So you're going to have to talk to the patient in order to get this information. And so that would include things like the current medication list of the patient, so the, the current medications the patient is currently taking, the chief complaint, which is the complaint that actually brought the patient to the hospital or healthcare setting that you're interacting with them in, their medical history. So any relevant medical history, so recent past surgeries, or if they have recently been ill, their pain level, if they are experiencing any pain, how high is that pain? If they're not currently experiencing any pain, were they experiencing pain initially that actually brought them to come to the hospital? Stress levels, because stress levels does impact our overall health and any signs and symptoms like nausea and headaches, because we can't actually see when someone is nauseous or we can't see when someone has a headache, but they can tell us that they are experiencing these things. And then next to the subjective data column, we have our objective data column. So this is going to be information that you don't need to sit and talk with the patient to observe. You can actually see with your own eyes what is going on. So that would include pretty much all the vital signs, the blood pressure, respirations, blood glucose, oxygen saturation, temperature, weight. And that would also include signs and symptoms like vomiting or a cough. When a patient has nausea, that's not something that we can see. That's something that they have to tell us that they're experiencing. That is why it goes under the subjective data column. Versus vomiting, we can see when our patient is vomiting. We can hear and see when our patient is coughing. So those things would be objective data. So once the nurse collects data on the patient, they can analyze that data in order to develop their nursing diagnosis. So diagnosing involves analyzing data that is gathered during the assessment, identifying health problems and risks, and then formulating a diagnostic statement or statements about a patient's current or potential further health problems. So if you notice that a patient is coughing, that is objective data that was gathered during the assessment. And so you can see what they are potentially at risk for. The patient is coughing, they could be at risk for a sore throat. So anything that you find in the assessment portion, you would use that to critically think and create a nursing diagnosis for it in the second stage of the nursing process. So the third stage in the nursing process is the planning stage. This is the stage where objectives and goals for patient care are going to be established and we are going to use collaboration with the patient and with other healthcare professionals in order to do this. So essentially the nurse is going to help to plan a course of treatment for the patient and it is important that that is patient-centered. So what this means is that you have to consider the patient's health status their baseline and their current status. You have to consider their support system. For example, does the patient live at home? Do they live in a facility? Do they live alone? Do they have family members coming to visit them? You also have to consider the patient's access to resources. So for example, if the patient that you're taking care of lives alone and has disabilities, their plan of care is going to be different than someone who might have disabilities but they have a lot of family support at home. It's also important for goals in the planning stage to be realistic. If the patient got into a car accident, for example, and they lost all sensation from their waist down, a realistic goal is not to have the patient walking around without assistance by the end of the week. So care plans really should provide a course of direction for personalized care that's tailored to each patient's individual needs based on their situation. And it's important to note that the planning stage is not a one and done type of thing. It's typically an ongoing process. 
So there will always be an initial plan of care or care plan for a patient based off of their initial assessment. But depending on what type of healthcare setting that you are in, that will need to be updated on a relatively regular basis. So for example, if you are in a hospital setting and there's a patient that is in the hospital for a few days or for a week, their care plan is going to be updated every change of shift. Every time that a new nurse walks in, does an assessment on the patient, the care plan is going to be slightly edited based on new data that is gathered from the patient's status changes. One day the patient may be fully alert and oriented times four. The next day the patient's cognition may decline. And so the care plan will need to be updated. It's important to not just keep the same plan of care no matter what is happening with the patient. As the patient is changing or as the patient situation is changing, the care plan needs to change. So the planning stage is usually ongoing and it can be very long depending on the healthcare setting that you are in and what the patient is going through. And then the final plan of care is typically the discharge. And with discharge planning, that takes into account the patient's situation outside of the current healthcare setting. So if the patient is in the hospital, for example, and they're going to be discharged to home, the care plan should be catered to how they will be able to take care of themselves and do their activities of daily living at home and outside of the actual facility. So the next stage in the nursing process is implementation. And basically implementation is the nurse actually putting the established treatment plan into effect. Now the final stage of the nursing process is evaluation. So we're gonna be seeing if the implemented plan of care actually worked and was able to benefit the patient. Evaluation involves once again, collecting data on the patient by doing an assessment, subjective and objective data is going to be collected. And then that data is gonna be analyzed by comparing it to the desired outcomes or the patient objectives from the planning stage. Pretty much we're trying to see were the desired outcomes for the patient met? Were they exceeded? Were they not met? And if they were not met, why were they not met? What factors contributed to us not meeting patient goals? And just like the planning stage, this is going to be an ongoing process. After a care plan is implemented, the nurse will check in to evaluate if the plan is working and then use collected data to adjust the plan of care. So even though the nursing process is a multi-step process that goes in a particular order, it is not linear. After the assessment and the diagnosis, it's normal for the nurse to go back and forth between planning, implementation, and evaluation multiple times before the patient is finally discharged. And so that is it for a basic rundown of the nursing process through the acronym ADPI. If you have not heard this acronym and you are in nursing school, you will definitely hear it throughout your time in nursing school and once you enter into the profession. If you have any questions, please go ahead and comment down below. Please thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.